Hello everyone. It is 5 p.m. on um, Monday, October 5th and uh, we were set for our Facebook Live today at 1 p.m. Uh, but I had to delay it. I actually grabbed something to eat this morning and I thought it was just egg and avocado and a few things that I could eat and um, got a hives reaction from it. So um, I had to just kind of settle my nervous system, settle my immune system. Um, somebody's popped on so I'd love it if you could say hi or throw up some hearts. I was just sharing that I wanted to delay um, the Facebook Live till 5, 5 p.m. today because I had a little bit of a hives reaction. So. Um, it happens when I typically eat something that I normally would have had anaphylaxis to, which anaphylaxis is immediate for me, would be uh, digestive upset, closing of my throat, uh, asthma, can't breathe, uh, usually would result in uh, an asthma attack or going to the hospital, perhaps uh, other pharmaceuticals required. Um, and now, so Donna's here. Welcome, Donna. Um, now my reactions aren't as severe and something that I eat that I'm allergic to will result in perhaps hives or, you know, something minute, maybe digestive upset. We'll no longer have um, such a hardcore reaction um, as I did when I was younger. Um, but yeah, it's very strange. Um, just, I, I don't know what was in the food that I ate, but it was some very strange hives reaction. So, um, being uh, off today, I had the luxury of uh, being able to postpone. Um, hopefully it's not too disruptive to everyone, um, but I think 5 p.m. is kind of a better time anyways. So, uh, if anyone has any opinions on our times of our Facebook Lives, we would love feedback on that because uh, we would love to, you know, just continue to up our engagement and be of service and um, continue to provide valuable content. So if you feel inclined to share our show that you are hosting a watch party with our Brio Facebook Lives, we would love that. Um, and if you have topics, uh, please send, send us those as well. Um, but also, if we can refine the time, if the times aren't really cutting it for everyone, just let us know. We're always a work in progress. We have spreadsheets. We try to be as organized as we can with our topics and have them laid out till at least December. So if you have topic ideas, we can start those for January, the new year. Um, but we can um, refine the times if that is something that it, um, would be beneficial to change. Uh, for example, not everyone can make 1 p.m. Um, during the weekday. So if that's something we could change, that would be great. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So this month's uh, topics is October is for stress and kind of mental health um, related to stress. Uh, there's been a lot going on with um, you know, what's going on with the virus, um, still, you know, cautious about that. Everyone is still, you know, processing the school system and what's been going on with the kids. That was high, high stress for many um, patients with children, many teachers. Uh, there was high, high stress going into September. Um, basically everything that I treated in September for those two groups was all about stress and anxiety, not being able to sleep, um, you know, not being able to eat, uh, things like that. It was just a really high stress time. And I think that continues, um, it settled a bit for the teachers. Hi Cheryl, welcome. Um, it settled a bit for the teachers. However, I think it's still um, going to be, uh, quite the process because there's half the kids still studying at home. I believe in Richmond. I'm not sure if every district is like district is like this, but in Richmond, uh, half the kids apparently have chosen to stay home. And then there's certain entry windows, which will be like October. There's an entry window to enter school again. November, there's an entry window, and then I think December and January mandatory will be all kids back to school in the classrooms. So we really have to give our teachers lots of love. Um, 
Dr. Jeff and I were even thinking of ways that we could help with our Facebook Lives. If anyone has any ideas, please let us know. Um, just any support we could offer the teachers because they are going through a lot. Their hearts are huge. Uh, their intentions are um, massive for these kids. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of top-down confusion and what they want to do sometimes is not necessarily translated um, so there's a lot of waiting and um, being told what they can and cannot do even if the ideas that they have are incredible so there's a lot a lot of pressure on teachers um, they're, they're doing a lot for us right now so we wanted to help in any way we can um, so let let us know just you can email us but October for um, this very reason is dedicated to stress and mental stress and um, I wanted to touch base on um, yes there's supplements and remedies that we can take and if that's more of what you'd like to hear from me I can I'd be happy to um, hi Mike welcome I'd be happy to list supplements as well but I wanted to go even further back from supplements before um, adding anything in um, well sometimes you know life is too too much on our plates and it is easier to take a supplement until we can get a hold of our nervous system and, and that I agree I agree to do remedies for the nervous system um, uh, I, I don't know of any remedies that are just purely just for um, one-stop shop because when I do prescribe for anxiety and nervous system stress it's it's very tailored to the person whether they have gut issues sleep issues skin issues whatever their situation is and not just to here take this for stress because we have to figure out how stress impacts the person the way stress and mental factors affect one person is completely different than the way it affects another. Uh, but across the board, I would say magnesium is a staple. Uh, when we are in high stress situations, magnesium is one mineral that we burn through. And magnesium is a tonic for our nervous system. It actually relaxes our nervous system. So that's one thing I would suggest. Oftentimes there's there's high qualities uh, and different qualities of uh, magnesium. At Brio we have magnesium citrate, uh, which is good for the nervous system. And then we have magnesium glycinate, um, or in some stores it would be called bisglycinate. And bisglycinate and glycinate is essentially the same thing, but that's a little bit more for the muscles and muscle relaxing, uh, but it still has the nervous system component to it too. So you really have to be careful of the quality of magnesium that you are consuming and purchasing but it does calm the nervous system. It can help kind of ease that monkey brain before bed. Um, you can take it, you know, a couple of capsules, depending on the dosage on the bottle, before, uh, right after dinner or before bed, and, or you can split it up, and usually it's about two, so two caps, that's pretty typical. So you can take one at night and one before bed or say one in the morning and split it up just to set your day with um, a relaxed nervous system. It does not cause drowsiness. So a lot of uh, patients are always concerned, does it affect drowsiness and alertness? No, it doesn't relax to the point of drowsiness. Say something that we perceive with a pharmaceutical drug or alcohol or what, whatnot. It, it is just a tonic of the nervous system. The nervous system is far deeper than we can actually feel and so when it's balanced, balanced nervous system does not mean uh, drowsy. <coughs> balanced nervous system just means not hyperstimulated um, into a fight or flight state or into an extremely activated vagus nerve um, which affects the lungs, breathing, skin, digestion, all that. So what we're trying to do is just calm the whole nervous system. Magnesium is great. And it can't be just a store-bought brand. It can't be like a big box chain brand. It has to be high quality. There's a lot, a lot of fillers in uh, vitamins and minerals that you have to be aware of. Um, it, all of these companies are multi billion million dollar companies and um, their your health is not always their primary concern as strange as that sounds for the natural food industry 
whatever makes a lot of money, it's not always about quality. So, you know, uh, supplements are big, um, try, everyone trying to focus on their health, but if it's not high quality, it's not even worth it to pursue it. It's worth it to find all of my videos that have lifestyle changes and implement all those. And as you implement all those techniques that I talk about, uh, your life will change. You'll have more energy. You'll be able to make more money. And then you can invest in a higher quality supplement because supplements that aren't high quality is just not worth it. We always carry professional brands and I thought those are great. And now there's other companies coming out with another levels, next levels of professional technology and what we absorb. And I can't even explain to you what um, the effects are. And I thought our, our uh, we carry professional brands and they're good, like Thorn. You can get it um, at a lot of health food stores. It's, it's a professional brand and usually has to be prescribed, <clears throat> but often you can get it at um, health food stores. Uh, Soroyal is a very high professional brand, and now I've seen that more at health food stores. However, there's other companies that are just blowing those professional brands out of the water, and when those professional brands that I just mentioned, Thorn and Soroyal, are really high quality and clean and good, think just even thinking about something that is um, store-bought at um, a, a pharmacy or a big box chain is just not even worth it. it, it it's not going to do what it says. It is usually full of fillers and that's more stuff for our body to detoxify and it won't have the therapeutic effect. So you might be taking it and sitting back on false um, kind of false confidence that is actually doing something when it's really not. So as I mentioned, if, if cost is an issue, just go to all our old videos on lifestyle changes. Every single video of mine has something to talk about lifestyle changes even before supplements. So just just don't. It, it's really not worth it at all. Um, but the effect of a high quality supplement, it makes a huge difference. So magnesium for the stressed um, brain or nervous system for sure is one that I would recommend. Number two, I would recommend a high quality B complex. So again, during stress, our adrenals are working overtime our liver is working overtime, our nervous system is working overtime, and B vitamins really help to calm the nervous system, and they are actually quite burnt. We burn through a lot of B vitamins when we are highly stressed. If there's any pharmaceuticals in your already prescription, if there's birth control pill for women, <clears throat> if there's um, hormone replacement therapy for women, you are already burning through a lot of B vitamins. So um, adding B vitamins, a B complex, is very, very, very beneficial. It helps nourish the nervous system, it helps nourish the adrenals, helps nourish and build blood. So oftentimes our um, iron levels are absorbed by uh, having B12, which you can find that in the B complex. Um, migraines and things like that are um, really, really uh, can be, some of them can be, some neurologists know that it can be really significantly reduced by taking B2. I think it's, um, Nine? No, nice is B3. I have to get back to you, but it's B2, I believe, is uh, the one that really, really helps, can help some migraines, um, which, which likely our nervous system, there's a nervous system component to it too. And again, the quality of B complex makes a huge difference. Uh, there's one company that we carry, and again, we have professional brands. I've always had professional brand B complexes. But this um, next level, uh, higher tier of a pro professional brand, um, B, B Complex, it, I, I can't even explain to you the results. It is uh, uh, incredible. Um, it's almost like a Lamborghini of supplements. And so mm, the lower brands, you just don't even want to have them. There's very, very, very little benefit to it. Um, more fillers. Um, you know, it, it's not doing probably what we think it's doing. 
although we have the best intentions. So I would say magnesium with stress is very um, important. B complex for sure to deal with stress is very important. And then as an overall nervous system tonic, and this doesn't have to be prescribed, uh, which is why I can mention it. Um, because as I said, usually for nervous system, I'm, it's very tailored to the person when I'm treating them. But uh, we have a remedy called Passifloraplex, and it doesn't act so deep in the nervous system that it will affect emotions and get into the mental emotional component. It's really a little bit more surface, but it takes the edge off of the nervous system being so heightened, so tense, so high strung. <clears throat> And it's easy enough to just kind of carry in your bag or purse and take it as needed as a standalone without even having it to be prescribed. Uh, but Passifloraplex, it really, really, really calms the nervous system. Um, typically, I would take like eight drops twice a day. And uh, like I said, when you take it, it's not gonna calm the nervous system and unveil all these emotions. So typically our nervous system is heightened because underneath there is stuff that is undealt with. And when life is, you know, in high stress, um, you know, you, you gotta get through this time. It's not often a time to open up to your inner world and start to clean that out and sort out what happened in childhood. We kinda just gotta get through this period. And then the deeper work, as I always share, will be to get to the undercurrent of those emotions that are causing the nervous system to be so stressed. So oftentimes remedies will calm the nervous system to a point where the body feels safe and then those deeper emotions will pop to the surface. Now self-prescribing, you don't typically want to do that um, unless you're very, very skilled at self-transmuting emotions, which not many of us have the kind of architecture within us to do that. However, Passifloraplex pas will not get to that deeper, deeper state. Will you feel calmer in your nervous system and a little safer in your nervous system? Yes, but will it get to the point where you're starting to unveil deeper emotions? No. So that is why I like that and um, also the reason why I'm kind of hesitant to always self-prescribe. Uh, a lot of patients will already be on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications, so you have to be very careful with herbs and such like that, um, even some supplements. Um, around this time, a lot of people will switch to 5-HTP uh, because it's getting darker and that helps to calm the seasonal affective disorder effects on people and the stress that that has. However, if there's antidepressants in the mix, you want to be very careful when you self-prescribe that. Um, you want to talk to your healthcare practitioner. Um, pharmacists are amazing. They have an amazing depth and breadth, breadth of knowledge of, um, of um, interactions, far more so than I would say medical doctors. <laughs> to be fair, pharmacists are incredible. Um, that's what they study. It's, I believe, a six year program and it's all about the drugs. And much like us, we were, we were taught the drugs as well, um, but we didn't learn for six years, like the pharmacists, about all the in, modes of action, the interactions, things like that. Um, and I don't believe, I was under the assumption that doctors had a extensive, extensive training similar to pharmacists, but they don't. Um, they have uh, less, less training than the pharmacists. Um, they know of all the drugs, they prescribe them, obviously. So um, maybe they may not know about all the interactions, but pharmacists are an incredible resource. So if you can ask them, um, your naturopath, should you have one, should also know if there's interactions with your pharmaceuticals um, and providing herbs, which is why I usually use Indo Remedies because they're uh, derived from herbs. They're homeopathic from the herbs, but there's no matter in there to, um, physical matter to interact with any drug. So that's why I love it. So should you be on any pharmaceuticals, uh, Passiflora, Plex is amazing. You can take that and it will not um, interact with your um, your pharmaceuticals. Uh, should you know that you're not taking anything for certain, you could even um, purchase uh, uh, um, the herbs of passion flower. You can get some tinctures. Um, passion flower is 
what Passiflorapex would be um, made from. So you can get tinctures of passion, passif, Passiflora, um, is it Passiflora? It's Passiflora, sorry, Passiflora herbs, um, so, skull cap, things like that. Um, those are all nervines to help relax the nervous system. So you could purchase those if you know that you're not on pharmaceuticals, but all those kind of take the edge off. Um, so you want to take the edge off, but there's also um, the ego voice, which is my re main reason for doing this topic, which I love chatting about the ego voice. And um, many not, may not know exactly what the ego voice is, but the ego voice is usually from the head. Um, our heart has a very different knowing. It has an intuition and it has a... Uh, all knowing to it and the ego is very limited it's from the head and it usually has an undercurrent of fear and it comes from programmed identity so identity meaning um, you know our family does it like this our family these are unconsciously usually programmed from our family our, our family speaks like this our family processes emotions like this, um, women are supposed to do only do this, men only do this, um, I have to do this profession, I can't do this, I can't do that, and that's programmed generally from, I, I didn't realize how much we were programmed, but it's apparently 90% of our identity. And that keeps us into almost limiting even getting help from someone, say a practitioner, um, because of what we think should happen is usually coming from here. Whereas um, when we're living more in the heart and the goal is to get the person to the heart is, is um, there's action taken, but it's from a deeper knowing um, that feels peaceful and it's not rushed and it doesn't have that urgency voice to it but from here it's it's almost it's very hard to almost penetrate so um, when patients come in and they're in a high fear state um, it's very difficult for them to sometimes even hear you um, I've had patients um, and many who show up on the chats and who have taken my programs I know one girl who took my program she's been a patient for many years um, she took my um, online program mastering your metabolism which takes a lot of what I talk about in my one-on-one -on -one, and she said I didn't I wasn't able to really hear you all these years. You were saying the same thing. I wasn't able to hear you. And from the program, I heard it at a different level. So she um, has even less time on her hands now. She has a daughter, she's working full time. But it was the repetition of maybe seven years of listening to me repeat it. Um, it's it's like her ego is starting to surrender to hear what I'm saying. So when the ego state is so, so programmed and high, we think we know how things should happen. We, we actually are creating our reality because we think we know what should happen and that's all we're gonna see um, in the scenario. Because it's coming from the mind, it's almost like a hologram projection of what we think should happen and that's all we'll see um, whereas when we're coming from the heart it's just it is what it is and um, when when there's the ego mind it's it's very difficult to even um, the challenge at first with healing is to get a person to loosen their ego to even hear and take steps um, I have patients often who will email and say um, you know, there's heavy metals in these in the remedies, I'm not gonna take them. Do you think that Health Canada would allow us to sell remedies that have heavy metals in them? There's no way. Do you think that I would sell a patient uh, remedies who usually, patients who come to the naturopath are sickest of the sick, you know? They're, they're at their kind of wit's end with healing. Um, they've gotten so far with other practitioners or other systems and they're at their wit's end. Do you think that I would sell and promote remedies that have he heavy metals in it that would be totally um, a, a villain to your health? There's no way. But the patient will read it and say, I can't take these remedies. So they're in ego. They're in um, an anxious state. They're in a projected um, fear state, project, projection, and protection of self. 
So I have to say, you know, if you look beside the heavy metal, it says a 6X or a 12X next to it. And that means it denotes it's a homeopathic potency, which means there's no matter in it. It's not a actual heavy metal. And uh, inside each one of our cells, we have heavy metals, not heavy metals. So we have metals, we have aluminum, we have copper, we have um, lead. We have all of these metals inside each and every one of our cells. Now the ego program mind doesn't know that because it thinks heavy metals I need to protect myself from and this patient did this to the TCM doctor too wouldn't take the herbs because didn't know where it came from fair enough I think it was liquid I, you know whatever these are sealed in a bottle come from Belgium I'm not making them um, so how would a patient know? They don't know, but the projection is the anxious mind and the ego brain that won't even let the treatment take place, uh, won't even let them open up the remedies. Um, my phone might die. If it does, I totally apologize. Um, I tried to plug it in. Hold on. Uh, not going to work. Okay. Um, I, oh, I hope it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't collapse. But uh, the anxious projection of I need to protect myself from this practitioner and these remedies, and I have found out that there's heavy metals in there, and so the treatment stopped. So in in the response, it has to be um, my expla explanation of intracellular. And if you know you don't want to proceed, um, this is how I treat. And there's other practitioners that would be happy to help you if um, this is not suitable for you. But this is how I treat. Um, I'm not talking to the patient's heart like that. I have to be a little bit harsh because I'm talking to their ego. And the ego is the resistance to change because we think we know how we should heal. It has to be on my way, this way, this is what's wrong with me. And to wiggle through that ego and start to whittle it down is the whole practice. So the ego brain is usually gonna be like, this is stupid, this is not gonna work, this person is just taking my money. And that starts to come into play as we start to make changes, the ego brain brain will be howling like monkey monkeys in a cage it will start to howl because if you start to surrender to your heart and not listen to your ego it's losing its clutch on identity which has kept you safe all these years even if you have symptoms somehow the ego thinks that this is a protection mechanism for the body and that's what we have to deprogram so the number one way to uh, start to whittle down the ego is to well you have to recognize the anxiety behind it and the fear there is fear and anxiety always underneath the ego thinking that we have to self-protect um, and we know we know better we have to keep ourselves alive that is the role of the ego and we have to give it love because it is an important part of us and yes at some point in our lives it did do that but we're no longer three we're no longer two we're no longer five years old the ego doesn't know that and so one way to override is to start to make healthy habits that are non-negotiable the best example is, can you imagine brushing your teeth every day, but it's a negotiation? Um, that's the ego. So it's like, oh, uh, 7.30, I don't really want to brush my teeth right now. How about I just like, I, uh, maybe I'll make the bed, I'll change the sheets, I'll do some other things, I'll go for a run, then I'll come back. Run probably wouldn't happen, but um, when somebody has a high ego state. But, you know, maybe I'll uh, do some coloring or I'll watch some Netflix videos and then I'll brush my teeth and say this dialogue goes on all the way till 10 p.m. And then finally it's like, okay, I gotta brush my teeth. And um, so then it just gets done. So this is the chatter of the ego all day long. So the only way to override that is to have a set non-negotiable um, habit that you put in place and that is to calm the ego mind. So for some it could be um, a prayer or a meditation every morning but it has to be non-negotiable because that ego mind is gonna come into play hardcore. And the only way to set structure to start to loosen the grip of the ego and how it works and become the observer of the ego, um, I always think of the ego as like this octopus. You have to like pull the tentacles off and be able to observe it. And the only way you can start to observe it is if you set um, architecture in your life, like non-negotiable habits. So let's say first thing in the morning, it's prayer or meditation, 10 minutes a day. 
every single morning your ego will probably be like let's just do it at noon it's just 10 minutes i'll take off 10 minutes no maybe let's... and then at noon comes around it's like i want to hang out with my friends for lunch i don't want to like meditate um i'll do it when i come home after dinner and so after dinner it's just like oh i'm just gonna watch netflix and have a little bit of wine after one, I shouldn't really pray or med uh, meditate. It's not really a good idea. And then so on and so forth. It's like, I'll just start fresh tomorrow because tomorrow I'm going to wake up early. I'm going to sleep early. I'm going to wake up early and I'm going to meditate or pray or journal or whatever tomorrow morning. And that negotiation is the ego trying to get us off of having the healthy habit and to start to have architecture in place where we can observe the way that the ego operates. Um, most of us are operating in full-on ego mode, um, <clears throat> unless you've done a lot, a lot of work. Um, it's full-on ego mode. But the way is to have that, okay, at 8 a.m., this is what I do, and it's a non-negotiable. Once that ego knows that it can swindle you out of doing it at 8 and you did it at 10, it's in there, and then it'll start to crumble not to say that it will never get back in place, but it will take some time and you can get it back into place and you'll probably fail a thousand times, but the goal is to not stop trying. You have to always keep trying and the architecture of this consistency is what starts to pop out that ego mind. And then slowly, you know how your ego functions as you get more and more clear, um, it gets a little bit more sneaky, but you start to figure out how it functions. And then you can sit back and be like, I don't want to take these remedies. I think there's heavy metals in it. Um, let me just inquire about it instead of saying, I'm not taking it. There's heavy metals in it. Let me just inquire about it. Let me say and acknowledge that I feel fearful. Um, I feel a bit anxious and um, I want to heal. I trust you, but this is what's going on for me versus I'm not taking it. There's heavy metals. Um, this is a no go. So the number one way to start to curb the ego uh, voice is to have um, structure. And most of us also fall short with putting too much structure and being overzealous with the amount of things we wanna change. It really takes time. You have to do one thing at a time and do it really, really well. Uh, for example, um, exercise is a big one. I follow a lot of fitness girls on Instagram and um, it's not that they're motivated. They have overrode their ego. So if they rely on, you can hear it, when you can hear it and how they talk, you can hear it. But it's not that they overrode their motivation um, or, or their desire, they make it a non-negotiable. Their ego is totally checked. It is, oh, I had to put the okay their ego is totally silenced with when it comes to um, working out they uh, make it such a ha habit and a pattern that they've overrode the ego and it's a non-negotiable um, I do this with everything in my life when it was coming down to my naturopathic treatments and changing diet which was 20 30 years ago now it's a non-issue for me meal prep, all that, all that chatter, it took time to implement each and everything. Um, exercise is a big one for me. It's very difficult because my mind is programmed to think that movement is um, gonna kill me because of my asthma history. And that's just ego protection. So this summer I started walking and I made it a goal to walk, I think like five days a week, 10K. And there's a, not that much resistance because walking is not that difficult. Um, but it, there was many days where I wanted to um, get out of it. And I didn't set a time uh, that I would get the walk done. I just started with real gentle structure and like get the walk done. So get the walk done. Some days when I knew there was a lot of people outside, I would even get it done at like 10 o'clock at night, um, but I wasn't gonna give up on myself. So that architecture is now in place to the point where if I leave it two days, it will feel like I never um, walked and I and, and it's very scary because all those, it's been like three months now and it feels like I, I, I could let this habit go very easy. So it's not really a total, total egoless, um, 
got to get it done yet. Um, but it's getting there because on some days, even after work, as it's getting darker, I've gotten like, oh, maybe I'll just go tomorrow or maybe I'll do two tomorrow. So that, that negotiation keeps coming in. So you don't want to get into the game show negotiation because the ego loves that because it would love for you to just sit on the couch. And that's with everything with health. So we want to start to incorporate habits to get that anxious mind that octopus pulled off so we can observe how it functions and how it kind of rules our lives. So now I still have an ego, of course. It's not gone, it's not destroyed. People always talk about it and destroy the ego. It's a part of your brain that you wanna protect. It's a part of your nervous system that you wanna protect because it kept, kept you safe for all these years. Um, but we wanna give it a different role. We wanna nourish it, we wanna integrate it. We, won't, we don't wanna kill it. Um, we want it in the back seat versus the driver's seat so that you can get stuff done. It can get you up and changed, um, but um, you don't want it to be like drive in the driver's seat saying, no, just you know have some wine and sit on the couch. That's the ego voice. So when you set something in place, it has to be followed through. Otherwise the ego will start and it will take over. And it could take years to change over everything. Um, but you start with one thing. And um, after a certain point, like three months you're, or even two weeks, when you start to notice real true, true changes, your ego will try as hard as it can to talk you out of it. It will tell you this is stupid, you should stop. Um, and that's even with just like slight home techniques, but I see it all the time with naturopathic treatments too. A person gets to a certain um, point, their symptoms are just starting to go away, and then um, they'll stop. And so that's the ego voice saying like, this is how you heal, like it shouldn't take this long. That's programmed. We've programmed, we've been so indoctrinated that healing should be quick and a magic bullet and that's absolutely not the case. I can assure you, uh, you don't have to go as deep as I have gone, but it is not a one, two, three visit kind of endeavor to turn around health. It is often, if you're realistic, it is often years of an endeavor uh, but the ego voice will tell us you know um, three months in I'm good I've spent a lot of time um, I'm good that will lead to symptoms returning and then it looks like you know you could say that the practitioner wasn't that great everything came back or you have to go to them again and that process of starting to uh, turn everything around is kind of difficult when you've been on a good tra trajectory and then the uh, person thinks that they should stop um, that's a little more difficult to get them back on track again it takes longer um, but that's the ego voice telling us you know we should stop uh, if you listen to the heart, um, you would know that focusing on your health, investing on your health saves you the most time and money and um, really invokes the most quality relationships, love relationships, friendships, and peace. So why would you not want to invest in it every single day, all day? Um, we're taught not to and that ego also doesn't want to be so disintegrated. It, it wants to grasp onto that identity so hardcore. I'm from this country, I'm this religious background, we do this, we do that, uh, and it, it's just clinging on to all these identities and it doesn't want you to change any of that. Uh, not to say you shouldn't be of uh, following any religion, all, it, it's different. There's a different kind of uh, relationship with religion, which is quite beautiful um, once the ego surrenders. So, does that make sense? Is there any questions? Carly has just joined as well. Um, is there any questions? That's really what I wanted to touch upon. So there's a few vitamins you can get, but really starting to incorporate daily habits to start to have a relationship with your ego and know when it pops up. Um, it's sneaky. So mine, um, I would say is quite uh, integrated and dissolved, but it totally still comes up and I have coaches in place and mirrors in place to show that to me right when it pops up. Um, I have to catch it. Um, the voice of it has changed also to sound more like my heart because it's very sneaky. Um, so I have to be very discerning of um, what my heart actually wants to do and what my ego wants to do. Um, it, it's very fascinating, but in the beginning there's just a lot of re resistance, fear component to it underneath and a lot, a lot of programming of how we should be and shouldn't be and what we think our identity is. and. 
if you really start to heal, you'll notice that a lot of these constructs um, start to shed, and then our symptoms start to resolve as well, and um, it's all linked together. It's all linked with the ego. Um, does that make sense for everyone? Does anyone have any questions? Um, yeah, that's really what I wanted to chat about today. I'll write a little summary about this too. It's harder to summarize the ego because it's such a... Um, uh, abstract construct but just think of our fear self our pain body we carry a lot of pain as people we carry a lot of pain that's not transmuted um, and we carry a lot with us and every time that pain body gets triggered um, we have reactions and you know mainstream media is so good and skilled at triggering our pain bodies so you know um, it's constantly triggered um, unless you know um, how to really deal with it that's really what I want to chat about today. Um, healing and daily habits are necessary for curbing the ego brain. Um, think about brushing your teeth. If you made it a negotiation all day, it just seems so ridiculous. Everyone knows you wake up in the morning, you have to brush your teeth. It's a non-negotiable. The ego doesn't even come into play. Sometimes you could feel tired and not want to, but you know it's a non-negotiable. So that's the point you get to with um, meal preparation with remedies with visits with exercise all that it starts to become like brushing your teeth it's a non-negotiable habit and in it you can just start to discern the heart and you can see when your ego is at play and just kind of observe it rather than it's running the show it's almost like a toddler um the ego voice is like a toddler so we almost have to speak to it like that too it's a part of us um but an immature unintegrated part of us um and that's really what i wanted to share um any quick questions before i sign off for today uh, went on a little bit longer than normal, but that's typical. So, um, any questions anyone has? If not, we're good. Um, and we'll leave it at that. And also, like I said, if you have any um, suggestions for times um, and switching the times, um, you can let us know that too. Um, just send us an email at briohealth at yourbriohealth.com and um, that would be great. That would be very helpful. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you for your attendance as always. And if you found this valuable, please um, share. Oh, thank you. I see Rav's mom is online. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, Rav being one of our amazing front staff, um, so her mom was watching. So thank you everyone. Thanks. Have a great night and I will talk to you soon.